friends, Mrs. Reed here, back to share another read aloud with you. Today I'm reading a book that is another book written and illustrated, meaning the author and the illustrator, the person who wrote it, and the person who drew the pictures is the same person. And her name is, her name is Judy Schachner. And we're reading Sarah Bella's Thinking Cap. Sometimes, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, because I know it happens to me a lot, you get stuck in your own brain, you get a little distracted, and you're thinking about other things, like when we're at school or when we're at work or wherever we are. So this is Sarah Bella's experience. You ready? Let's be readers and listeners. Let's go. Sarah Bella's Thinking Cap by Judy Schachner. Sarah Bella had no time for small talk. In fact, she never talked much at all because she was too busy thinking. She thought about big things and she thought about small things. I'm noticing the beautiful colors that the illustrator and author has used to draw these pictures. And oodles of in-between things like ants and uncles and doodles of poodles. Doodles meaning drawings. What do you think, Pinky? She said to her cat. Oodles of doodles, meaning lots of doodles, meaning lots of drawings. Her cat's thinking about, what, bitch? Pinky's thoughts would remain a mystery because he can't talk. But there was nothing mysterious about her family. They loved puppets, painting pictures, we do, and playing guitar. Most of all, they loved their cerebella just the way she was, with her feet on the ground and her head in the clouds. Her head in the clouds is a metaphor. It means it's something that's they're likening something. Her head is always thinking it's always somewhere else, like it's in the cloud, which would be a simile, by the way. To Sarah Bella, there was nowhere she would rather be than dreaming of painted ponies racing across the sky. See if you can notice in the illustration what she's thinking of. There's a lot going on up there. Some ideas came as a complete surprise to her while she caught to her while other notions were coddled and cared for like plants in a well-loved garden. Coddled means kind of like cozy, taken care of. I need to read up on you, mister, she thought to herself as she was watering her plants. There was never a doubt that Sarah Bella had a green thumb for thinking. The problem was no one ever knew what she was thinking about. Notice her cat's face. That's Pinky. Check him out. I have to say, I can't tell if he's grumpy or what. Her teacher, 
Mr. Fantas Fantasi had a knack for knowing just what Sarah Bella wasn't thinking about. And that was schoolwork. That happens to us, right? Sometimes all it took was a word, a sound, or the scent of Samantha's magic markers to carry her thoughts away. And that's when Mr. F, who was really very nice, had to send her home with another note. And this made Ter Sarah Bella feel terrible. A note for mom and dad because she wasn't paying attention. Oh. The notes never upset her parents because once upon a time, they got sent home with notes too. Really, Sarah Bella? Really, replied her mom. You have daydreams in your DNA. Daydreams in your DNA, meaning she's just like her mom and dad. It happens to everybody. Uh, I'm going to read you the note. Sarah Bella is well behaved and thoughtful, but her head is in the clouds. She needs a pair of heavy shoes, which means keeping her grounded, keeping her back in the place she's supposed to be. Like if she's in class, she needs to be paying attention in class. At bedtime, Sarah Bella cuddled up to her sister, Cece. I wish I knew how to focus, said Sarah Bella. It's easy, said Cece. All you have to do is take deep breaths and squint. At school the next day, Sarah Bella followed her Sarah Bella followed her sister's advice, but all she got was a dizzy spell and a visit to the school nurse for an eye test. Meaning she was squinting so much so her teacher was concerned. But I like her effort because she was trying to remember and she was trying something new. One night during the math facts memorization meltdown, a bear of a thought dropped by for a chat. I have a good head for numbers, he said. Do you think there's a real bear sitting there talking to her? Probably not. I can see that, replied Sarah Bella. Hmm. Keep me in mind if you ever need help, said the bear. I'll consider it, said Sarah Bella. And that was her first mistake. Why do you think that's a mistake to keep that bear in her head when she's trying to focus on numbers? I'm not sure. The second was taking the bear to school the next day. I sure hope you left some room in your head for math facts, her sister said. There's always room in Sarah Bella's brain for one more tantalizing thought. I'm wondering if she brought an actual bear or a stuffed bear or if the bear is the bear in her head. What do you think? Just not math facts. By the time they arrived in class, the bear had fallen asleep. And, but waiting in the wings was an odd flock of birds who didn't know the difference between an egg and the number eight. That's when she heard Mr. F calling out her nickname. Earth to cerebellum. Cerebellum is your brain or a part of your brain. He said, a penny for your thoughts? She's not thinking, said Russell. She's daydreaming. Daydreaming is an awesome kind of thinking, said Mr. F, but not during class. I like Mr. F. He seems very understanding. And he's absolutely right. Daydreaming is a kind of thinking. Because that's where your imagination is going. Crazy. 
That afternoon, Cerebella stayed in at recess to catch up on her work. She liked sitting at the round table in the quiet room. I know you can do this, Cerebella, said Mr. F, handing her the very last quiz. Just put on your thinking cap and focus. Cerebella began to imagine what her thinking cap might look like. And then she turned back to her papers. Right before the bell rang, Mr. F had Cerebella hand out the weekend assignment. They were always something fun to do. What do you think, Cerebella? asked Mr. F. An otter popped into her mind. But that was just the first thing. Before she even got home and kissed Pinky and put on her comfy bunny slippers, Sarah Bella had already thought of a thousand extraordinary things. By dinner time, she had run out of paper. She had an upset tummy and a great big mess on her hands. Hmm. I wonder why she had an upset tummy. It looked like she was working very hard. That night, just as Sarah Bella was about to give up, a whale of a thought appeared on the horizon. And the closer it got, the more beautiful it became. And though it was the most enormous creature she had ever seen, Sarah Bella felt unafraid. Do you know what I think? asked the whale. I can see what you think, replied Arab Sarabella. And so should everyone else, said the whale. To share it, you've got to wear it. Then the whale blew Sarabella a kiss before she swam away. Look inside that whale, what are you noticing? This gave Sarabella an idea. She found a brown paper bag and a ruler for measuring, and then she rounded up some old magazines, pretty papers, pencils, pastels, stickers, stamps, along with her favorite drawings. And for the rest of the night, she clipped and colored, pasted and painted until her project was all done. Monday morning, everyone was eager to share their weekend project. A penny for your thoughts, said Mr. F. As the kids sat crisscross applesauce on the floor, Who's going first? To the surprise of all, it was Sarah Bella. If you want to share it, he said, standing up in front of the class, you gotta wear it. She looks a little bit shy or nervous, but she's brave for being ready to go first. Sometimes it's hard to share something. And that's exactly what Sarah Bella did when she placed the most spectacular collection of doodles and daydreams right on the top of her head. So that's what you've been thinking, said the kids in awe. Laura saw unicorns. Zavi saw, saw planets. Dylan saw a cat, a snake, and a feather, while Nate reported seeing clouds with a touch of bad weather. A penny for your thoughts, said Sir, Mr. F, said Sarah Bella. I think, he said with a smile, your thoughts are worth more than all the pennies in the world. That makes my bucket feel full.
these are all of the crazy things that Sarah Bell's things mind has been thinking. All the things she's been imagining and she made it into a hat. How cool is that? And that's the end, my friends. Until next time, see you later.